This tutorial will give you a brief overview of assistive technology options available at the Jefferson County Public Library. Before we begin, I'd like to give a brief shout out to Joe Zibrick, who's been a champion of these technologies for many years at JCP Health. The Assistive Technology and Digitization Workstation, or ATD Workstation for short, is located at the Belmar Public Library. The American Disabilities Act defines disability as a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities. A person who has a history or record of such impairment, or a person who is perceived by others as having such an impairment. The assistive technology workstation better facilitates several kinds of conditions. Visual impairments, including blindness, low vision, or color blindness. Auditory impairments, which may include hearing loss of all kinds and degrees, as well as other conditions such as hyperasculus or tinnitus. Cognitive impairments include conditions that impact memory, problem solving, attention, reading, linguistic, mathematical, visual, and verbal comprehension. Conditions like dyslexia. Motor impairments may include traumatic injuries such as spinal cord damage or loss of limbs, as well as diseases and congenital conditions such as cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, spina bifida, Parkinson's disease, arthritis, and tremors. An increasingly larger portion of our population deals with disability on a regular basis, and so it's very important for our technology tools to support them. All of the software and hardware discussed in this video is also overviewed in tutorials that are available on our network drive and in a binder adjacent to the workstation. If you notice anything is missing or have any problems figuring out a given software or hardware, please feel free to contact the help desk so they can update the website or help keep you informed on how it works and also make sure that all the library locations can have the same updates. We appreciate you contributing to our knowledge pool. We also store the slide trays for the scanner in this binder. JCPL has put considerable thought into considering hardware to make this workstation accommodating. The workstation table goes up and down, for instance. This workstation features a motor impairment friendly mouse and a keyboard with tactile feedback for easier typing. There's also a webcam and microphone hidden in the monitor that can be used for N-Touch and other similar applications. By default, the display speakers are turned off, but you can find the adjustments in the lower left corner. You can switch between the monitor speakers and your own set of headphones in Windows in the lower right corner. When you first log in, you're greeted by a choice to do the assistive technology side or the digitization side. It's the same software set no matter which you pick, but this helps us better gather data on what people are using the workstation for. We've done our best to make sure this workstation is easy to use and make it obvious what applications and possibilities there are embedded. The icons on the upper right indicate most of the assistive technology functions and all the icons across the taskbar are digitization and assistive technology. On the left side are the digitization functions. One of the easiest and most powerful software applications to use on this computer is ZoomText. ZoomText is a suite of lots of different functions to make it easier to use the computer, not just the web, but all applications on the computer. When it first launches, it should give a brief introduction to its features and functions, and you can also see them just by looking across the icons. It's important that patrons and librarians who are helping patrons take note of these because the application will start talking to you automatically, which might be a little bit confusing for people who are new to it. You can adjust the cursor size as well as the pointer through the buttons and dropdowns associated, as well as colors for low contrast viewing or colorblind users. You can adjust where focus highlighting works, as well as use a magnifier to zoom in on parts of the screen or have a portion of the screen dedicated to zoom and magnification. If you switch tabs, there's also a reader. This is the part that is reading aloud what the computer is focusing on and what you're working on at that time. You can turn this on and off and change the voices from here. This workstation also features a camera-based document scanner. You could put any given arbitrary text material beneath the scanner and it will take a quick screenshot of what's on the page and read it aloud to you. The software is called Open Book and it can be found on the desktop and taskbar. To capture a page to have it read aloud, go to the Acquire menu and select Acquire Page. It will take a moment and there will be a camera sound and after that it will start reading. Once you've taken the screenshot, you don't have to keep the material open and present. It will read through it. You can see the yellow highlights on each word. 
Now, the reading may not be in the best voice. You can go and change it to one of the other voices on the computer to make it a little bit easier to understand, but this function is really neat. That allows any patron who may or may not have good sight to take pretty much any material in the library and have it read aloud to them. There are additional settings and shortcuts that you can check out through the help menus. One of the most powerful programs available on this workstation is called JAWS. This is an accessibility program that has been around since 1989. JAWS is a screen reader program that enables blind or visually impaired users to read the text that is displayed on the screen with a speech synthesizer or braille display. It allows people to read documents, emails, websites, or apps, easily navigate with their mouse as they hover over and hear things read to them, scan and read all of their documents, including PDFs, fill out web forms, and more. Most people that would want to use it will already know quite a bit on how to use it. It's very driven by keyboard shortcuts and has many different kinds of options for voices and reading back web pages. It can be great to familiarize yourself with it, but I don't think you'll generally have to worry about too many patrons coming in who won't know how to use it. I would generally suggest that they or you enroll in a full class on JAWS if you'd like to learn how to use this powerful and complex software. Read and Write is a toolbar-based application that's used in many schools and learning settings and provides many of the same kinds of functions as the other assistive technologies. You'll notice it may bump over the icons and reassociate them because it's taken up a top portion of the screen, uh, but the launch icon should be over there on the left. It may seem a little bit redundant to have so many different softwares and tools that do similar things, but the idea here is to accommodate users with what software they're familiar with. These are the most commonly used throughout the industry and at other public libraries around the United States. EnTouch is a video relay service which facilitates telephone communication between a deaf and hearing person in different locations through the use of video conferencing technology. The deaf person connects to an interpreter via video phone and a high-speed internet connection like that we have at GCPL. The hearing person connects to the interpreter using regular voice telephone. These VRS calls are paid for by mandatory contributions from the telecommunications and telecommunications relay service. Patrons are welcome to use their own account if they have one, but we've already provided one for free that they can use to log in. Upon first logging in, their video will be disabled for privacy purposes. There's a shortcut in the lower left. They'll need to know the telephone number of the person that they're calling to enable the relay. Here we can see an example of a successful call between a Sorensen associate and one of our technology staff, Joe Zibrick. It's important to note that as per FCC regulations, it is not allowed for a hearing party to call this video relay service. It is not intended to be something that replaces sign language interpretation services, but instead to accommodate individuals who are deaf to make telephone calls via video relay. You don't have to hit any special buttons to get the text going in the screen. You just start typing and it shows up automatically to the other person. It's pretty easy to use. This workstation also has digitization functions. And one of the most common ways to do that is to capture physical material into a digital form. There's a flatbed scanner that has what's called a CCD camera inside of it that can capture uh, books that have curved angles where the pages are edged out a little bit because of how you had to fold it over the scanner. When you first launch it, you can choose between automatic and professional mode. Professional mode has options like de-screening, which is great if you're scanning something that has a film or protective cover like cards on it, and an option to set where the files are automatically saved. It's probably easiest to do the desktop. You can also scan to PDF, which is really helpful for some users. One of the tricky things about this software is that if the scanner is not powered on when you launch it, it gives a very unhelpful error that, and refuses to launch. So make sure that the green power light is on on the front of the scanner and that it's all powered up before you try to launch the software. Thank you for joining us for this brief overview of the assistive technology and digitization tools available with this workstation. We hope to add more tutorials and information about what's available in the future and possibly expand this program if use and interest is high enough. It's very important to us at JCPL to include patrons of all kinds and make sure we are inclusive in our libraries. Thank you for watching.